Okay, so I would just like to say welcome. Uh, thank you all for joining. Um, this is uh, a Woman Entrepreneurs Network event. Um, Lisa Ann Schaefer Santon is here, and she is going to do the uh, step up in style, um, helping us plan plan our content, kicking off like this whole virtual series. And I think that's wonderful. I appreciate it. Um, I am just now with Woman Entrepreneurs Network. It is we are one year official. Very excited for that. Yay! <laughs> and um, with that, I kicked off a uh, annual. Um, membership program it was a pay as you go but now i'm moving towards a membership and uh if anybody is um iris if you are interested after this if you, if you like the what you hear what you see and, and what we're going to do um the my website is sugarmesweetevents.com so my name is lisa ann santon i live in beverly and i'm a wardrobe coach and i help women kind of craft um a closet that works for them. It doesn't mean it's about designer frocks or expensive things. It's about owning your power and your authenticity and your style and getting dressed with ease and no more BS. So <laughs> that's what I do for my full-time job. But the purpose of this of today is due to the pandemic, all in and the world going forward is going to be very different and there's going to be a lot more virtual spaces and uh, showing up in the virtual space. So I wanted to tackle this from a standpoint of empowering you to do that, to feel confident to do that, and then some tips and tricks about how to look in that space. So today is about like just forming a pep rally around you guys about why you should be showing up in the virtual space. So everything I'm going to tell you does not correspond to when you have virtual Cinco de Maya night with your family and everyone's grabbing a drink or when your very best girlfriends from college are coming together. This is more for showing up in the virtual space as a professional, whatever that means to you, and being available for people right now with what you have to offer, your gifts, and some content that you may never have thought about sharing before the pandemic. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to share with you today, I've been talking to with my coaches. So I wish I could say this is all original out of my head, but um, a lot of this has come up over the last seven weeks and even a little bit before with various people that I rely on to help grow my business. And I think um, two or three months ago, I, I might've had different advice than I have today. Things are different today. You can actually get out there and say something today and it doesn't have to be super curated and it doesn't have to be perfect in the way it might have needed to have been just three months ago. So people are craving content right now and all the coaches, all of the business gurus are like, this is the time to say what you have to say. If it isn't feeling comfortable for you to do it around your work, content do something about a hobby that you have or just something light like bring something to the world of instagram facebook or other platforms i have an opportunity today to do this through Rhonda's platform so there's a lot of opportunity out there people are craving content and membership-based organizations really need more engagement to just keep things alive and going and so they're going to be open to allowing you to just try out something, give it a try, feel like, all right, this is the time, seize the moment. So I'm going to give you like three tips on how to get your mind around this. Um, <clears throat> so they're in, kind of in the form of questions. And I'm going to look at my notes here so I will refer to this. Um, so I guess one of the things to ask yourself is, well, what really energizes you about either your professional work and if it energizes you, is it worth sharing? It probably is. Um, or where do you have a core competency or something that you really could share with others that doesn't take away from them eventually hiring you, but gives them a sense of what your work is or what your special service is? And um, where do you feel most confident? Like, where do you feel like you can show up as the alpha? 
so that your content is really easy, if you will, so that you're not struggling to create content <laughs> and making another job for yourself with the other 600 jobs we all have today because we're working at home. I know we're doing laundry and making food meals and homeschooling kids and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, go for the low hanging fruit. And again, if you don't feel comfortable doing it about your work, because that feels too salesy or you don't feel authentic, what hobbies do you have that could help people feel more uplifted right now? Gardening tips, um, vintage music collection. I mean, you can really get creative and you can show up and be of service and be sharing and starting to create your online presence. Um, the second question to ask is, well, who do you want to do it to? Do you want to try it just with your friends because that's comfortable and that's okay? So kind of knowing who you're going to try it with, or are you going to try to put it out there through one of your membership organizations? So Rhonda, if I can speak for her, um, is looking for her members to have an opportunity to do one of these to kind of get their feet wet in it, but also to give her a way to connect with her members by having her members um, get a chance to talk. So what's your audience? What's your platform? The biggest platform right now is Instagram stories. And I'm gonna learn for the first time this week how to do an Instagram live uh, because I have a colleague that's gonna teach me. We're gonna do it together. I really haven't migrated off Facebook yet and I know that I need to do that. Facebook is becoming a little bit, I don't wanna say passe or stale, but Instagram is the platform. So if you're gonna do anything, you might as well start on Instagram instead of trying to do it on Facebook and learn your way in. Having something else to do during the day besides the news cycle, which is really, really easy to get stuck in right now. So they're looking for little Facebook lives. This doesn't have to be an hour long. It can be three minutes. It can be Iris Weaver out on her walk showing you this exotic plant that you don't even, you pass it every day and don't know what that plant is. It can be like a quick, easy thing to start building your confidence and kind of getting out there and trying it. Um, the other thing to ask is, if you're going to do it, make it fun. Don't make it another job. So really, um, if you're going to try this and this is the time, and I really believe everyone has something to contribute, um, just look at it with a serving heart kind of thing. Don't look at it that it's going to monetize right now. Look at it as a way to build your brand have your face out there, being pleasant, being of service, you know, giving somebody something again to look at that's not the news cycle. And then you can decide whether you want to continue to use it professionally. And I think once you get into it, you do get more comfortable. I happen to be, started doing it in 2017 using Facebook Live. So I happen to be in a good position right now because I've sort of worked out all that angst. I'm not a person that really loves being on stage, so it took me a while to work out those kinks. So this is a great time. I think this is an opportune time to try it. And then here's where I get into the woo-woo stuff. <laughs> um, I think part of feeling comfortable with this is knowing how to, to feel grounded and not um, feel like you're on stage trying to perform and people have different ways that they like to do that some people like to do a meditative walk some people like to journal um, some people well go to the gym we don't do that right now but you know exercise journaling meditating so knowing what you would do before you um, get on the platform to deliver um, just kind of gives yourself a little tool. So I have like essential oils that I like to use. I have a diffuser going in the background. Uh, I have a little crystal. So, you know, that works for me, but whatever your grounding thing is, having a hot cup of tea when you do it, 
Um, just make yourself as comfortable as you want to be because you want to come forward being comfortable and authentic. So figure out what your personal ritual is. Um, what do you do to sort of soothe and, and get in that space? And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the setting it up in terms of your own brand, how you look. So I finally found a spa <clears throat> in my house that works great for my Facebook Lives. And it is um, a lot of natural light. All I invested in was a very, very inexpensive tripod because I didn't want to hold my phone all the time or try to prop it up on a book and have it move. So I think at the time I bought it at Best Buy, it might have been $40. So you can order something like that on Amazon. That is the only piece of equipment I bought. I didn't do any fancy lighting. I didn't go crazy with, I don't even have an upgraded iPhone actually. I'm working on an eight, I think. So I found a place in my house that worked because the light on most days is really good. It's natural. I have a piece of art <clears throat> that I stand in front of and I didn't even do that intentionally, but it turned out to be a nice thing. People have commented now after three years of seeing me do them again and again about the artwork that's in the background. So find a way to frame yourself. <coughs> I'm sorry, I have allergies. <coughs> find a way to frame yourself. And when you're doing Facebook Live or Instagram stories and you're not outside, if you're doing it in one spot in your home or your office, it's nice to stand. That gives you another way to ground yourself. Um, I feel more like myself when I'm standing. Now, obviously, when you do a Zoom call for work or a seated call, you're in a smaller frame. So you, again, you want to line up where you're doing this. You don't want it to be too light. You don't want it to be too dark. Um, I've seen a lot of reporters in their bedroom. And I don't know why that freaks me out. That's so weird to me. Like you see their bed in the background <laughs> and their dresser, and maybe they're in New York City and they only have like a small apartment. But I'm, I think you have to be mindful of what you're creating as your um, frame. And then you have to also play with the height of the computer, which is sometimes you need to put a few books underneath it or, um, you know, kind of play, I have a laptop, so kind of play with the monitor and just try to get your sort of best framing. And it's having a welcoming presence. So um, yes, I can see you, but I can't see you in the way I would normally. When I'm meeting with you, I'm making eye contact. We're facing each other. You know, I'm a touchy-feely person. Iris knows I'm, I'm always like, excited and grabbing your hand. So how can you create your, whatever your personality is in this little tiny box? Um, so kind of using your voice. I also have done some voiceover training, so I'm really comfortable using my voice. But using your voice to convey your excitement, your emotion, your authenticity. And again, trying to make eye contact, even though I know it's not really <laughs> easy. So smiling and just bringing a welcoming presence to your Zoom call or your actual delivery of your content. Um, something that Lisa Malgram said, who's another um, stylist on the North Shore that I hadn't even thought about, was kind of the, the teeth. <laughs> I didn't think about that. You know, make sure your teeth are brushed, make sure you've, you know, kind of had your lunch removed. Uh, Fresh lipstick, you know, just kind of making sure because people are focused on what you're saying that you actually are clean, hygienic. Same thing with the hair now that everybody cannot get a haircut. Um, because that kind of is your frame, you know, keeping your hair neat and tidy, uh, um, kind of like your eyebrows also. And I don't usually wear my glasses when I do um, my calls because I have big glasses. They are my signature. Um, that is my logo of my company. But I like to take them off when I'm doing this because I think you can see me better. Um, and just not going crazy with makeup because um, I don't wear makeup. I have asthma and allergies. But just 
being fresh. Uh, she suggested, I loved this, just brightening up your skin, just putting a little toner on before you come on. Again, just making sure you have a little lip gloss or lipstick, just being welcoming, fresh, tidy. Uh, if you do keep your glasses on, make sure there's no smudge, you know, make sure that they're like clear. And uh, just being bright and attentive. And if that for you means wearing a little bit of makeup, great. Um, I'm trying to do bright colors. I own a ton of black. I'm very much like a New Yorker in that regard. So I've been trying to come to these meetings with some color on because we all need that uplift. And I will put on just a little bit of jewelry just to look a little polished. So dressing comfortably, but professionally. Um, the noisy distraction in your space when you get on a Zoom call or you're doing a live, just be really conscious of that. Um, so my husband's office is on the same floor as, as I am. And I asked him, I know he's on a conference call. I said, can you kind of keep it down a little? So just know what your audience is. Um, if they don't mind that kind of, you know, the dog barking or whatever, but sometimes it's distracting. So trying to limit some of that noise. Once you do that, you're also the focus. People are not going to be looking around to see what that noise was. They're going to be looking and paying attention to you. Also, when you're choosing what to wear, I've been telling my clients to shy away from prints. Prints can be challenging in a wardrobe as is. <laughs> and then when you're in this like small condensed square, I think it can be a little bit distracting and very, very bold colors. So I'm saying to show up with bright attire to make this heavy time seem lighter, but some of the bright colors you have to kind of be aware and play with. So less is kind of more. I think, um, we're all struggling again, I said, with the hair. So if you're going to put it up or do a, a barrette or a headband, again, you just want to be sure if it's professional that you're not looking like you're just going out for a run. It's that really fine line. I'm not saying that we want to come to this with a Gucci suit on, <laughs> a $3,000 blouse, but... I'm just seeing that everyone is really, really, really showing up uh, kind of raw. Now, in the case of Iris Weaver, you are an herbalist. You are a gardener. That's how you want to show up because that's your body of work, Iris. So you would be the one person I would say, show up like that because <laughs> that's what you do. And that's the spirit you want to capture, the nature, the herbalism. Show us what's going on in the garden. If you showed up wearing an outfit, that would look silly. So you have to... If you're a yoga instructor, then show up in the yoga clothes, of course. But for the rest of us doing sort of the normal range of business, um, I would temper that really, really super casual. A piece of jewelry, have it be modest, just so the eye is really focused on the content and not something big or a scarf. I do wear a lot of scarves. I try to make them kind of small. I don't put my big chunky ones on. So that's kind of curating the frame. That's kind of how you show up. And then the content piece, I think it's just such an opportunity right now to be out there and giving those special things that you don't think are special that you know Kind of giving some of that away right now will put you on the radar screen. Um, you can really do anything and use Rhonda and her platform as a safe base. I feel like this is a small group of women, all like-minded, all from the North Shore. Test it out with these gals. Ron, tell us a little bit more about what your vision is for the members and for this platform. Um. Well, just that. I would like people who are the members to come on and be the featured speakers, share what they do, their expertise, their knowledge um, with everybody else. And, you know, my hope is that, you know, if they haven't been doing it, 
this gets them to break out of their shell and give it a try. The ability to have a safe space somewhere to get better at it so that when they go on their page, they're, they're comfortable and um, they see more of the authority on it. You know, so I, the whole goal of Women Entrepreneurs Network is empowering through education and teaching people how, how to do many different things. Most of us are entrepreneurs and working for yourself doesn't mean to be by yourself. We, we, we want to have a community around you to support you. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I think that having, having this as an option, personally, I, I wish I had had it. You know, I think it's great um, to, have that, to have that as an option. So I know, I know that Patricia um, was interested in doing it, but she's, you know, a little busy and a little like maybe doesn't know exactly what to put together yet. So I'm hoping something like this can, can help her, maybe Iris and, and anybody, um, you know, might see this, that that's, it's okay to do, you know what I mean? Like break through the shell. And, and like you said before, this is a perfect time to do that because you know, nobody expects everybody to be perfect. This is new for so many people. Us who step into it instead of fighting it are going to be able to help the others along and we're going to be in a really, a, just a more comfortable space. Absolutely, yeah. It, it is going to be uh, very interesting to see how this all pans out. I mean, the basis of what I do is events and having people in a big groups all together. So yes, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> all going to be reinventing. I mean, I go into people's homes and work with their wardrobes and work with their closets. I've got to figure out how to do that in a different way uh, because I don't think people are going to want non-family members in their home for a while. So it's, it's going to be really interesting for all of us and all of us need to survive and thrive and have businesses that can support ourselves. So we're all going to need to figure it out. And I think if we're committed to doing it together and in the spirit of service, versus competition. I think that's going to serve us that kind of collaborative thinking. I don't want to be gender biased, but <laughs> I think women just do that naturally. So we're going to have an easier time at it, I think.